Teslas make great road trip cars. They're really fun to drive. It's cheaper to supercharge than it is to buy gas. And autopilot and full self-drive make road trip driving so easy. But if your family is like mine, they don't necessarily pack light. We're gonna take a look at one of the coolest rooftop cargo storage devices and how it impacts your efficiency on a road trip so you can plan ahead. What's up YouTube? Welcome back to the channel. Today, we're gonna take a look at an awesome collapsible rooftop storage cargo box. We're also gonna show you how to install it and we're gonna take a road trip to see exactly how much efficiency you can expect to lose by adding some extra storage up top. Now, if you saw our summer video where we took a family trip down to Myrtle Beach and had to drag a ton of baseball stuff with us, we ended up using a tow behind cargo carrier. It dramatically increased our drag, which reduced our efficiency a lot. But today, we're gonna check out the ones that go on top of your car and to see if they impact your range capabilities just as much as a tow behind or maybe less. Let's take a look at the storage box that we're gonna be using. We are going to be using the California rooftop storage box made by 3D. This thing is actually really cool. It has so many unique features to it that the normal traditional boxes don't really have. Number one, you can see it's collapsible. It just collapses on itself. It has these sides that you can just pull out and make it like the normal size. But for easy storage purposes, they fold right in and the whole thing just like folds up and becomes super, super thin, which makes it really awesome for storage when it's not in use. It's not gonna take up a bunch of space, but it's still big, it's still nice and wide and can absolutely house several suitcases in there. And it's still really light because of it. It's also very aerodynamic. You know, it's got the tapered front edge. It's also got a tapered back edge to make sure that it's as efficient as possible when you're adding some extra drag to the top of your car. This one is universal, so it can work on all sorts of vehicles, not just a Tesla. It has these racks here with these sliders. You get these, these little clamps right here. It's just a big, long metal bar. And then you get two of the sets of a long bolt with a knob and a nut on the end of it. <gasps> That's what she said. <laughs> In the bolt, the very top here, has a lip. This is what is gonna be inserted into those sliders down here that I mentioned before. So you'll see the holes of the sliders are really big here and then like it's kind of long straight away. You're going to face the smooth side up because that's what's gonna go underneath your crossbar that's gonna sit right here. You're gonna take that lip, you're gonna put it into the giant part and then you're gonna slide the slider over so it stays and it catches in there and now it's nice and secure. And then we're gonna use the knob to turn it to tighten it. Hey. Let's get it up there. Now, I'm a one-man show. It's really lightweight, and because it's collapsible and it's made with a really just a strong material, it's really easy to mount by yourself. The 3D logo end is actually on the back. This is gonna go on the back of the car, and then the other side's gonna be on the front. All right. And that looks good. I think it's a little uh, off-center. Better. Let's go ahead and put our first mounting bracket in. We're gonna find those openings, we're gonna slide them in, and then we're gonna push the slider forward and we're gonna tighten. Once you do it once though, the other three are easy to kind of figure out. And it's actually very helpful if you open up the door, give yourself a little bit of space there. You kind of have to flip it up a little bit. I found it's easy to start in the back and to work your way up to the front one. All right, so I'm latched in back there. This one is in and I just push the slider forward so I know that the back one is good to go and secure. All right, I'm in there. So now that's good to go. It's sitting in the slider, it's really hard to see. So now I'm just gonna tighten these knobs and make it so it's nice and tight. I just hand tighten them. It's kind of hard, especially right now, it's freezing cold out so my hands are like really struggling. I mean, you have four of them, they're gonna be anchoring it down. So it's gonna be safe and secure. You can see, I mean, this, this isn't moving, it's not going anywhere. Now you're gonna repeat that process to the other three and you'll be surprised how A, easy it is and B, how secure it's gonna be once you get it all done. It is up, completely installed, ready to go. It is very secure. It ain't going anywhere. Will that break? 
It broke. It literally took about like 15 minutes to get them all up. Tyler and I actually just returned back from a trip to Atlanta for another soccer tournament of his. So I have two bags handy. These are like just standard like carry-on bags. Don't make fun of me, I'm vertically challenged. I have to use a step ladder for this. First thing we do is we pull out the side. This is fully weatherproof. There's two layers. So this layer right here is the weatherproof bag. When we go to seal this up, we're actually gonna seal this one first, which is gonna make this completely weatherproof. And then we're gonna take the outer shell and then we're gonna, we're gonna zip that one up. So if you're driving to it through a monsoon, you don't have to worry about it. Anything you put up here, it's gonna stay dry. All right. Go ahead, throw that up there. The zippers that they use are super heavy duty. So they zip really easy. And then as if they didn't need to make it even more weatherproof, 3D went ahead and made extra sure that you never have anything to worry about. There's like this lip that actually comes over the zipper as well, all the way around, just to make sure you never have anything to worry about when it comes to weather. You still have almost half the amount of space up here. So I mean, look at that. Look, look at how much space there is. I could easily fit another third suitcase, plus a couple school bags and a bunch of other little stuff up here. Out of your way when you're zippering. We're in the car. Let's go ahead and let's find our destination and get our starting point for things. Our starting point for battery is 78% or 225 miles. I already know the supercharger that I wanna to go to. So to find superchargers in your area, if you're wondering, you just go, you can hit navigate and you can hit charging and it'll bring up all the superchargers. The other thing that you can do is you can just touch on the map and then touch on the little supercharger icon down here and then that'll also bring it up. So you can kind of do either way. We're gonna go to the super charger in Blakesley. Uh, this is up in the Poconos of Pennsylvania. It is about 70 some miles. So let's go ahead and see. We're traveling a total of 74 miles. It's going to be about an hour and 20 minute ride each way. We should get there about 2.03. We should arrive with about 29% battery left, which means we're going to be using almost 50% of our battery. So what do you think? How are we going to make out? So I think that we are not going to be at 29% and Tesla needs to send out an update so that I can say on here, I have a bubble on the top of my car and it'll adjust it. I kind of agree. I don't think we're going to be at 29% either, but I'm real curious to see what these numbers are going to look like after we get back with no bubble yeah. and to see exactly the impact that it does. Now, one thing to consider again, I know this isn't like scientific. The drive we're doing is we are going to the Poconos and it's a little mountainous, but I will say the drive is both up and down both ways. So it's not like we're just climbing up a mountain to go and down a mountain to come back. We are literally like two minutes into our drive and we noticed that our prediction is now down to 23% battery. And, and literally like we're maybe two minutes away There's from our light. house. I'm wondering, maybe the car feels the resistance of the bubble up there and maybe it's starting to auto calculate and fix the prediction of what we're gonna have when, we're, when we get there. Cause I mean, literally three miles ago, we were at 29%. All of a sudden we're down to 23%. I mean, if not, and that's gonna be the drain that we're gonna get, oh my, we're never gonna make it there. Maybe we get stranded on the side of the road. Who knows? We are now 14 miles into the drive and now we're dropping down to 19%. We did a very little bit of highway driving. I think the car is trying to figure out exactly where it's gonna be. I think it's trying to make an accurate prediction and it's trying to figure it out. So we are averaging 473 is what our average watts per mile is. It projected the, the rating where it expected us to be is all the way down here and we're, we're significantly higher than that. I think the car is trying to balance it out and trying to figure it out. We got about 32 miles left and we are currently still predicting 19% battery, which is pretty good. I mean, it's still holding strong at 19%. I gotta say the drive has been pretty smooth. So it's a very windy day. I mean, you can feel that the wind is kind of kicking the car a little all over the place. I've been an autopilot for most of the highway portion of the driving and autopilot's done a fantastic job at adjusting to the wind.
we have arrived at our Wawa supercharger with 15% battery or 45 miles. So we originally started with a prediction of 29% and we actually arrived with 15%. So that's a pretty significant decrease. That was 14%. That was a pretty big drop. It was a huge drop. It was interesting watching it drop as we drove. So our average was 543 watts per mile. It's almost 100 watts per hire more than what we were before we hit the highway. This gray line here is where the baseline was of where the Tesla originally expected us to come in and look at how much worse off we ended up. I mean, that's a pretty significant difference right there. We're gonna go ahead and charge up. We're gonna stop, stretch our legs, maybe grab a little bite to eat for lunch, and then we're gonna get rolling. These superchargers, these suckers are brand new. 12 brand new superchargers here in the Poconos. It's still got all that sheen on there. That thing is brand spanking new. Yeah, it's still got that new supercharger smell. So we are right back to where we started this trip at. 225 miles, 78% battery, 74 miles for the way home, an hour and a half. We're gonna arrive right around four o'clock with 42% battery. That's interesting. We're exactly where we need to be. Let's go ahead and head on back. We are actually almost home. I did end up driving the exact same route. I'm currently sitting at 141 miles. A lot less battery used. We are at home. We have 137 miles left or 48% of our battery left, which is pretty much almost spot on for what the Tesla projected in terms of what our percentage was gonna be when we got back. It was projecting 123 miles. Our average was 267 kilowatts, which is pretty close to the rated. It's a little worse, but the rated was, was right here, was just under the 267. Now the footage you just saw was me doing this the first time. When I got here, I took the bubble off. We went home without the bubble. So you saw all those stats from what it was the first time. Now this is the second time doing this. But this time we're gonna keep the bubble on. We're gonna do that exact same drive so we can compare this same leg with the bubble versus without the bubble to see what the true impact was. Our predictions, 74 miles, exact same drive as last time. It's predicting we're gonna have 37% battery when we get back. When we did this the last time, it predicted us to have almost 50% battery when we got back. Very interesting that it's saying that the battery is gonna be less this time than the last time. And we're at the same exact percentage we were the first time we did it. Again, I I'm wondering if maybe the Tesla has a way to sense that there's more weight up there and it's sensing that there is a bubble. So I'm real curious to see if that's gonna be where we actually end at. Only one way to tell, right? Let's drive. Let's do the drive. We're doing 150 miles for no reason. Round trip twice. We are back home now and we are back with 43% and our mileage is 124 miles. So we drove 74 miles, we started with 225. So that would have brought us to around 150, which means it's pretty darn close. And to check out the charge stats real quick here. Wow, our consumption on the way back was an average of 301. That was a, a whole heck of a lot better. And look where the projected line was. We weren't that far off from the projected line. That's, that's actually really remarkable. The way back, it did absolutely phenomenal. I feel like that was pretty solid. We actually did better than what the original forecast was. Let me collect the data between this trip and the last trip on the way home, and we'll recap and uh, kind of make some sense of it. And Tomorrow. The numbers are in. Let's go ahead and uh, take a look and see if we can make any sense of this. I made two trips to Blakesley and back. Both times there, I had the 3D California bag on the top. Now, the first time I went to Blakesley, it forecasted we would arrive with 38. I arrived with 23% and 67 miles left on the battery. The second time I did it, it forecasted I would arrive with 29% battery. I arrived with 15% and 45 miles left. Pretty different between the two. The second trip, it was much windier outside. All the difference really just, I think, 
came from the weather and I think that played a factor in this. But the actual percent loss compared to what the Tesla predicted was almost exact both time. I kind of feel like the data that we got from the trip out to Blakesley is almost kind of irrelevant. I think we got to throw it out altogether because honestly, I think I think what this said was the drive there was more uphill and the drive back was more downhill. And I don't think you can compare the uphill to the downhill to get an idea as to what the range effect is going to be. Let's just look at the two trips back. One trip we made back, we had the 3D California bag. The second trip back, we did not have the 3D California bag up there. When we came back without the 3D California bag up there, it forecasted that we would arrive with 42% battery. When we arrived, we arrived with 48% battery and we still had range left of 137 miles. So we actually came back better. We gained 6% on the way back. Once we added that 3D California bag up top, it predicted that we were going to arrive with 37% battery. Now, keep in mind, we started the journey both times with the same amount of battery. So the Tesla was expecting more battery impact with the 3D bag up there. And you're assuming that. We don't know if it takes weather conditions into account. Like We're not really too sure what it was that day, but it did predict something different. We actually made it home with 43% battery still left and 120 24 miles. We actually gained battery coming back, which blows my mind. We gained 6% coming back with the cargo box up there. Coincidentally, we also gained 6% without anything up top on the way back. It was the same gain. Yeah. I think in the end, I mean, basically it was what, 48% and 43%. It was only a 5% drop with the bubble. Yeah. I would not have predicted that. I would have thought, especially with the tow behind that we had, I felt like we had to stop more going to Myrtle Beach. So I definitely think from that aspect, it was not as drastic of a drop as I had anticipated. Now, obviously there is some impact with the 3D California Absolutely. bag, with any storage compartment you put on top of the Tesla. I mean, the numbers were kind of skewed all over the place. I don't think we can make a definitive estimate as to exactly how much it's gonna eat off your range. Because I think one thing we did learn is there's a lot of other factors that a go A lot of variables, it. yeah. Yeah, I mean the weather. Cold versus warm. Also, how fast you drive. When I had the storage compartment on the car, I only drove the posted speed limit. On the way back, I did drive how I normally would drive, which is a little bit over the, what the posted speed limit is. Also, the type of roads, are you going up? Are you going down? Is it flat? I mean, all that's gonna impact it. One thing we can decipher out of this to give you something to plan your trip by. I think it would be fair to say to expect anywhere between a 10 to 25% reduction of your battery efficiency on a trip. For each charge, because it depends on, you can't eat, right. right, in between each, yeah, every time you charge up. So if like you're going on a really long road trip, if it's telling you you're gonna arrive at the next supercharger with like 10% left on the battery and you have a storage container up top. Just ah. keep an eye on it. Make sure you're watching that energy consumption as you're driving. Yeah, I would either charge up more at the supercharger you're at before you start the trip, or maybe look for a, a supercharger that's a little bit closer on the way. I think it's gonna be somewhere between 10 and 25%. And I know that that's kind of hard because it's still a big range. Something else I think we, we can decipher out of this, at least the 3D California bag that we tested, that has a lot less impact on the battery than the Definitely. tow behind it. Yes, 100%. I mean, it was, I would use that well before the tow behind. And I do feel like it holds almost as much as the tow behind did. I mean, you could fit a lot of luggage up there, but my preference all day long would be the one on top. I think we did learn something out of this video, thank goodness, of driving 300 miles for just this testing purpose. I also gotta say the 3D California bag was amazing. I've used like those plastic Tulu ones and stuff like that. This one was by far the easiest to use and set up. It was super lightweight. Really easy. Like when you get to your destination, you could just kind of slide it behind like a couch or something really. Like you can keep it out of the way until you go home. The California rooftop storage container made by 3D is available for $310 on their website. They make a lot more than just the floor mats. They have a whole line of like outdoor stuff. They make crossbars for the Tesla. They make crossbars for all sorts of other cars. They even make like little tables that come off of the wheels that, you know, if you're going camping and stuff like that, they have a whole line of great outdoor products. So check them out. If you pick up anything at 3D, whether it's the California rooftop bag or the floor mats or anything else feel free to use our discount code that they gave us for you guys it is lock it 3d 10 obviously it supports the channel as well lock it 3d 10 at 3d anything that you pick up there I'm ready for a road trip where are well, we going that's 
We're going to Disney. That's a long one. Let's keep planning road trips. We got storage now. Well, there you have it. If you got a big road trip coming up and you want to bring one of those bubbles, you want to plan ahead a little bit. It's not as bad as I thought it was going to be. This was a pretty good worthwhile video, I think. And if you think so, make sure to smash that like button. Thank you so much to 3D as well for sending that to us. Thank you guys for watching. If you haven't already, please consider subscribing down below. We got a lot of great Tesla content coming. Thanks so much for watching, guys. If you want to see our big two-year review video, go ahead and click click right there for that one. And if you wanna see the last video that we did, go ahead and click right there. Thank you so much for watching guys and we'll see you in another one real soon. It turns out I installed this thing completely backwards. I had the big part of the bubble in the front and the little part of the bubble in the back. The big end of the cargo box is actually supposed to be in the back. That explains why we kind of have this dent here in the, in the front of our cargo box.